In this video I'll show you how we can build a program counter out of logic gates and what it does in the CPU. So in the last video we looked at how a machine code program executes in the CPU. The machine code program is stored in memory and it has to be fetched from memory and the program counter points to the next instruction in memory that the machine code program will run. So a program counter should be able to count up in binary. As well as that, we may want the program to jump to a particular location or run round in a loop. So the program counter needs a function to be able to load a value into it. This is a simple latch circuit. Every time I press this push button switch, the LED will toggle on and off. The way this works is we have two latch circuits, one here consisting of two NOR gates and one here. We have AND gates which will only let current through to the first latch if the button is pressed because the button is connected directly to the two AND gates. The second latch will only be able to get current through to it if the button is not pressed because we have the button connected via a NOT gate into these two AND circuits. And then we have a crossover here, which will mean that the current will only get through the first AND gates if it's the opposite latch value to the one that we currently have. So when we press the button, the LED changes state. You can see when we press the button down, the first latch switches, and when we let the button go, the second latch switches. And if the LED is off when we press the button, it will be on when we press it and release it. And if it is on, it will be off. So it's a simple toggle circuit. Each time we press the button, we switch the LED on or off. If we take a number of these toggle circuits and connect the output of each one to the input of the next one, we can make a basic counter. So when we press the button, the first toggle circuit will toggle its value and the first LED will come on. But then when that LED goes off, it's the equivalent of letting go of the button for the second circuit. So the second LED will come on when the first one goes off. And then when we press the button again, this LED will come on again. And then next time, this LED will go off, which will toggle this next one. And that one going off will then toggle the next one. Then we can keep going like this. But what we can notice is if we take the binary value and we say that this first toggle circuit is the least significant bit, the next toggle circuit represents the next least significant bit, the twos column and the next one represents the fours column, we can see we have 0, 0, 001 followed by 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and it continues counting in binary. So this is a basic counter circuit. Now this is a counter circuit again, but I've added a bit of extra logic to the start of it. This time I've got a clock circuit, which is automatically sending clock pulses to the circuit, and it's toggling the LED on and off. But the clock is going through an AND gate, which is connected here to a NOT gate and this switch. So the toggle circuit will only function if this NOT gate is allowing current to go through the AND gate. In other words, if I switch this switch on, the toggle circuit will switch off. Then the clock is also going down to this AND gate, which is taking the state of this switch, and that is enabling two AND gates here to let current through if this switch is switched on. They, one of these AND gates is taking the value of this lower switch, and the bottom one is taking the opposite value and that's feeding through to two OR gates which will send the value directly into the latch. 
So what this top switch does is switches off the toggle circuit and it changes the function of the toggle circuit so that now we can switch it on and off with this switch. So there we switched it on, there we switch it off. A program counter needs a method to be able to put a value into it to enable a program to jump. So that's what this function is. We can switch on the a switch to be able to control the program counter directly or we can have it just toggle with the clock. When we get a bunch of these toggle circuits and put them together we can use this technique to put a value straight into the program counter or we can have it just count up in binary. So here's our program counter circuit. We've taken eight of these toggle circuits with the function to be able to load a value into it we've connected the output to a bus. We have an output switch down here where we can enable the output onto the bus. I'll switch it on now and we can see the program counter currently has a random value in it. It has a value 6. Here we have the enable switch which will switch the clock pulses on. If we switch that on, the program counter on each clock pulse will count up by one value so it's now on 9, 10, 11 and it will count up when that switch is on. This switch here is connected to the function that will load the program counter with a value so if we switch this one on the program counter will go straight to the value in these switches which are the input lines for the function to directly load a value. So we can load any value we want into the program counter. If we say load the value 15 and then switch that one off, the program counter will go on counting up from 15. So this is our circuit for our program counter. Now let's have a look at it in our CPU model. So now I've added the program counter to the CPU model. In the control word we've got a program counter enable switch and as we can see that is now switched on and the program counter is counting up in binary. If I switch off the enable switch the program counter will stop counting up. We have a program counter out switch where we can take the value from the program counter and put it onto the bus. There we've got the value 8, 9, 10 on the bus. And we have a program counter jump switch as well. With the program counter enabled and the jump switch switched on, the program counter goes directly to the value which is held on the bus. So if we put a value, say 3 onto the bus, 2 plus 1, and the next clock pulse, the program counter goes directly to the value 3. We switch the jump off but leave the program counter enabled count up from the value 3. So we'll use the program counter to address the memory to fetch the next instruction that we want to execute out of memory and the instruction will then set bits of the control word to get the CPU to do what we want it to do. If you remember in the machine code video the instructions actually break down into sub instructions. So here I've added a 4-bit program counter called a micro instruction counter and that's counting up as well. For the micro instruction counter we have a reset switch. We don't have an enable switch, we'll have it counting all the time. But we have a reset switch but its inputs are connected directly to ground. So when we switch the reset on we'll really just load the value 0 directly into it. So the micro instruction counter is currently counting up. If we switch reset on it goes directly to zero and with reset switched off that will count up and we'll use this to keep track of what sub instruction we're on in our machine code program. So now we have the CPU complete with program counter and it also has RAM registers, ALU, output register. In the next videos we'll take a look at the instruction register where we'll load an instruction into the instruction register and then execute it and we'll add some ROM to the CPU so the 
run will hold what we want to do with the instruction and we'll get a program running in machine code in our model CPU. If you've learned something from this video give it a like and if you'd like to follow the series then subscribe. Thanks for watching.